Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop, and this is Thursday, September 26th. This is a late afternoon update from my earlier video I posted late this morning, early afternoon, and uh, much more information is on that video, and I'll have it linked at the end of this video so you can watch uh, what you need to know and what to expect for later on tonight. Meanwhile, looking at the satellite imagery, there you can see the storm is over here in the east central Gulf of Mexico, due west of Tampa, Florida right now, and it is winding up considerably. Let's take a look at the National Hurricane Center, and there's the new track, and I noticed they nudged it just a little bit further to the east. Not a lot, but it's going right up Interstate 75 now after it moves inland into uh, Georgia overnight and into tomorrow morning, passing over the Atlanta area as a decaying hurricane, but still a very strong tropical storm. But over here uh, in and around the Tifton area uh, in the morning hours, uh, it will be still a category two or strong category one hurricane at that time. Winds will still be at near 100 miles an hour. Now when it makes landfall over here in the uh, Big Bend area of Florida, it could be a category four with 130 to 135 mile per hour winds. Right now it's a category three storm with uh, winds of 125 miles an hour. Barometric pressure is down to 951 millibars. That's 2804 on the uh, inches of mercury scale. And it's now moving northeastward at 22 miles an hour. It has really increased in speed and it's going to increase some more. And that speed is going to take it like a, make it like a cannonball as it moves inland, moving up into Georgia. Hence, that's why the uh, category two status of the storm still that far into the landmass into southwestern portions of Georgia. Let's take a look at the hurricane warnings and uh, tropical storm warnings. Uh, the brighter area here, that's the hurricane warning goes all the way up to just north of Macon. Hurricane warning, yeah. And then the tropical storm warnings, meaning winds of uh, 35 to up to 70 miles an hour, uh, cover all the rest of Georgia, all of the uh, rest of Florida, and a large portion of South Carolina, even up into the mountains of North Carolina. All right, let's take a look again at the satellite imagery and uh, it shows the storm winding up and looking at the uh, visible view from tropical tidbits there's a storm wow look at the eye of that storm well defined now with strong convection in and around the eye itself hence this storm is getting stronger as it moves across those very warm waters of the northeastern gulf of mexico so right now even though it's at 125 miles an hour it could get up to 135 miles per hour, maybe even a little bit more than that before making landfall. Now, looking at the uh, radars from around my region uh, on my website, savannapat.name, there you can see tornado watches in effect until nine o'clock for portions of the upper parts of southeastern Georgia and central South Carolina, eastern South Carolina. Also until 10 o'clock in the southern counties of Georgia, northern counties of Florida. Uh, however, I have a strong suspicion that these tornado watches will be extended throughout the overnight hours. And looking at the uh, other radar, I have it right now set on Tampa and it, the storm is now past uh, north of the Tampa area uh, as it continues marching north northeastward at 22 miles per hour. And that area of Florida is also under a hurricane, I mean a tornado watch as well. Hurricane warnings along the coast and hurricane tropical storm warnings elsewhere in the peninsula of Florida. Okay, looking at the uh, Storm Prediction Center, the threat for tornadoes has been expanded a little bit across the uh, portions of North Carolina all the way up into uh, the southeast portion of North Carolina and uh, all of the eastern South Carolina and a large portion of uh, all of the large portion of southeastern Georgia uh, has the threat of tornadoes overnight and it looks like the greatest threat is going to be between 10 o'clock tonight and about six o'clock tomorrow morning yeah the worst time it could be because it's at night uh, anyway uh, these are what's called 
uh, fast track or short-lived tornadoes that spin up very fast and give you little warning uh, when they happen. Usually they, they happen inside the squalls, inside the storm itself. Now, the uh, storm surge uh, forecast across the Georgia coast and South Carolina coast in our area, northeastern Florida, is one to three feet. And that's, I'm not really too concerned about a storm uh, surge flooding here in the greater Savannah area, Brunswick and Hilton Head. Uh, the tide was high this afternoon. As a matter of fact, uh, it peaked out at 9.2, uh, 9 almost 9.2 feet. Uh, the tides can hold 9.6 feet. So it, it was fine. It was fine. And we're not getting any heavy rain at the moment. The tide now is going back out. It won't be high again until uh, about 4.30, 4.45 tomorrow morning. And it's only like a 6.5 foot tide. So I'm not worried at all about tidal surges in our area. But this is unbelievable. The uh, tide uh, over in the uh, Big Bend area of Florida, anywhere from 15 to 20 feet, uh, that's unimaginable. Their tides are usually, what, two to three feet. So th that's incredible. And that's going to allow the water to move very far inland. That's saltwater intrusion uh, moving inland. Um, it's it's you can't survive in a, in a tide like that coming in a storm surge. And it comes in very fast uh, in this portion of the world when the storm is coming up at this speed, at this angle. So th that's just a devastating tide coming into the Big Bend of Florida. Meanwhile, looking at the uh, conditions, this is the uh, high resolution rapid refresh model. Uh, it updates every hour. And uh, I just want to show you the map right so, and it shows the storm moving uh, and spinning and making landfall right around this time here. This will be at 10 o'clock our time, 9 o'clock central time. And it moves into uh, south central Georgia near Valdosta. And this will be at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. And then at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's right around Valdosta and just to the uh, uh, near Albany, just to the east of Albany, uh, approaching Tifton and then uh, moving northward and then curving back to the northwest. But uh, this shows it a little bit further east than what the National Hurricane Center's path is, so keep that in, in mind. But the, the key here I wanted to show you is uh, the, uh, the dynamics of the storm. And this is it right here. Um, let's back it up just a couple of hours. And here we have it right here. Uh, this is at uh, 7 Zulu, so uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it shows, it looks like to me, the maximum wind portion for our part of southeastern Georgia and moving into southern South Carolina. Uh, these were damaging winds all over uh, the uh, eastern half of Georgia. Uh, into southern South Carolina, and you have these very strong winds coming on shore along the coastal areas and the islands. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see winds of, uh, you know, easily 40 to 60 miles an hour and 70 mile per hour gust. Now, in some of the squalls that do develop, well, we might see winds uh, 70 miles an hour with spin-up tornadoes of 70 to 100 miles an hour, so you have to keep that in mind. The spin-up tornadoes, they, they're very fast. They don't last more than five to 10 minutes and, and then they're gone. Very hard to give warnings for those, but by the time the warning is issued and the sirens go off, the tornado is gone, but another one might be coming. So keep that in mind. Uh, expect to see a lot of uh, tree damage associated with this as well as the system moves across the region overnight. And with the tree damage, of course, you, know, you have the power outages. So keep that in mind as well. And then the storm begins to move on out. And by uh, just past sunrise, this is eight o'clock tomorrow morning, the storm is now right over the uh, uh, Tennessee, Georgia, South Carolina uh, tri area there and moving away, curving back toward the Tennessee Valley and weakening, but still very strong. So we're still going to have some very strong winds throughout the morning hours, but the winds will slowly begin to abate during the late morning and afternoon hours with some clearing skies as well. Well, as I mentioned in an earlier broadcast I, 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 and video that I how concerned am I? Well, if I have to take my telescopes down, I am very, very concerned. Uh, you know, I love astronomy and the telescopes are very important to me. So if I take them down, that means uh, I'm very serious about this and very concerned. And I'm just going to show you a quick video uh, of me taking down the, the telescopes, a little uh, fancy music, I suppose, in the background. And, uh, and then at the end of the video, if you want to check out more about 
what to expect. I have a detailed video that I posted earlier this morning. That's getting a lot of views. Thank you very much for that. And I'll also post the, uh, uh, those who supported my channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Okay. With that being said, stay safe. It's going to be a wild and wacky and very dangerous night across Georgia and South Carolina, and not to mention Florida. All right. See you later. Bye.